Hello and welcome to Starstream Gamer channel. This is the second video about AMD Ryzen overclocking. It is dedicated to RAM overclock. RAM is the most important thing when it comes to Ryzen performance, so it is crucial to make it work as fast as possible. To show you the basics of memory overclock, I will be using my own 16GB kit of Crucial Ballistics U4 rated at 3200MHz CL16 in tandem with MSI B450M Mortar Max motherboard and Ryzen 2600 CPU. You need to download four applications. The first one is CPU-Z, which you need to determine the ranking of your modules. They can be single rank or dual rank. You can find this information in the SPD tab. The second one is Typhoon Burner, which will help you to detect the right memory type of your RAM modules. Press the Read button and choose one of your modules. You will see the information you seek under the Die Density designation. In my case it is eDie. Remember your memory type. The third one is TestMem5, intended to test memory for stability. This one can easily find any memory errors. The fourth one is Ryzen DRAM Calculator, which will help you to configure memory timings as fast as possible. Make sure your CPU is fully stable before overclocking RAM, as any kind of CPU instability may complicate memory overclock. It should be at stock settings or overclocked according to the instructions shown in my previous video. Now enter BIOS setup. Choose Advanced mode. Go to OC or Overclock tab. Change OC Explore mode to Expert. I am using MSI board, but all BIOSes are very similar. Majority of motherboards has a feature called Memory Retry Count or something like that. This feature will restore previous BIOS settings if the system is not able to boot. You'd better turn it on, as it will help you to greatly reduce the amount of time spent on RAM overclocking. I would recommend to reduce the amount of retries down to 2. Otherwise you have to clear the CMOS manually every time your PC fails to boot by shorting the CMOS jumper or reinstalling battery on your motherboard. Then you need to determine the RAM voltage. 1.4 volts is the maximum safe value for any DDR4 RAM modules. So if you want to achieve as high performance as you can, then I would recommend to choose 1.4 volts. I decided to leave the voltage at stock 1.35 volts, because EDI chips are good enough to provide high performance even at such low voltage. If your memory modules are equipped with decent heatsinks, you could raise their voltage up to 1.45 volts, which is maximum safe value for high quality DDR4 modules designed for overclocking. Finally, you need to increase SOC voltage. Its stock value is 1 volt. Maximum safe value is 1.2 volts. But 1.1 volts is usually the highest value you need, even if you are aiming for extreme overclocking results. Typically, 1.05 volts is more than enough. First of all, you need to detect the highest memory frequency. For the first Ryzen gen, it is usually something between 3200 and 3400 MHz. For the second gen, 3400 to 3600 MHz. And for the 3rd and 4th gen, typical maximum RAM frequency is 3600 MHz, but some CPU samples can operate at higher frequency up to 3800 MHz. I decided to stop at 3466 MHz. It is an optimal frequency for the 2nd gen Ryzen CPUs in my opinion. I could go higher, as my CPU can operate even at 3600 MHz, but I had to raise the memory voltage higher as well. After you changed RAM frequency and selected 3600 MHz, for example, you need to make sure that it will operate at the selected value. 
So reboot your PC. If it fails to boot and you activated memory retry count, then your PC will beep a few times and revert BIOS settings to the previous ones. This means you should not increase the frequency higher than it was, or just reduce it by one step down to 35-33 MHz, for instance, and try again. If your PC booted up without any problems, but failed to load Windows, reboot it again and decrease the RAM frequency by one more step. After successful Windows startup, you need to launch Test Mem 5 application. Press the right button on the shortcut of the app and choose Run program as an administrator. Then press Load config and exit. Choose the profile Light 1 Enter 777. Then launch the app again as administrator and wait some time. Typically, this test runs for about 15 to 25 minutes. It will help you to understand if your memory is stable at the selected frequency and or timings. If the field errors is clear, this means that your current configuration is very stable and you can continue to tune your memory further. If there are a few errors, you should decrease frequency by one step and try again. If there are many errors, you'd better go back to stack value and make sure that your RAM is in good working condition and functions properly at XMP or SPD profile. Same thing concerns timings. Secondly, you need to determine the timings values. Use DRAM calculator, open the app, choose the generation of your CPU, the memory type, the memory rank, one for single rank and two for dual rank, the frequency, the number of modules and the motherboard chipset. Take a note that if you are using four single rank modules, your RAM operates as dual rank, so you need to choose two in the memory rank menu. Then press the two buttons, calculate safe and compare timings. You will see two columns. The first left one is the recommended values by the app and the second right one is the actual values set by your motherboard automatically or using XMP profile. At first you need to determine the values of the five main timings. I would recommend to change one timing value at a time. Start with CL and end up with RAS. Reduce a timing value by one. Then reboot your PC and launch TestMem5 as administrator using the same profile. Wait another 20 minutes. Repeat the same actions with all other main timings. CL should be the lowest one. If CL is 16, then other four timings may be 16 or higher, but not lower. The third part is the most complicated, as now you need to tune sub-timings. There are a lot of them and I would recommend to use the entire safe preset of DRAM calculator at first, except three values – RC, RFC and CKE. These three are tricky. I was not able to lower them as much as DRAM calculator suggested, while I had no problems with other timings. So I would recommend to determine these three. RC, RFC and uh, CKE separately, one at a time. After each change of timings, you need to reboot your PC and test it for stability with the help of TestMem5. First, try to tune majority of sub-timings, then tune RC and RFC separately. The last timing, called CKE, is quite tricky as well. I decided to leave it at the stock auto value. But your mileage may vary, so try different values if you want, for example 4 or 2. There are some formulas which you may find useful. They might help you, but sometimes they are not useful at all. Lowering the timings ending in DD can significantly improve the performance of dual rank memory, while single rank memory do not depend on them as much. So if you are the owner of two single-run modules, 
you may ignore those timings and let motherboard tune them automatically. If your memory type is BDI or EDI, you may try to use fast preset of DRAM calculator. I personally was able to match all the timings of the fast preset except one, RFC. But I have to raise voltage up to 1.4 volts, so it's up to you to decide whether you'd like to tune your memory further or not. You may also try to use intermediate values for some timings. The last thing you'd better do, use the more advanced TestMem5 profile, which is called Extreme 1 Anta 777. It will take a few hours to complete. But if you won't receive any errors, this means that your configuration is 100% stable and you have nothing to worry about. That is all you need to know about RAM overclock. Hope this video was helpful. What do you think about RAM overclocking? Did it help your system to perform better? Let me know in the comments section below. Good luck and till next time!